Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my show, Author to Author. Tonight, I'm going to interview Johnny Scythe, who's written a very interesting book called Pain of Grace. Let me start us off with a prayer, and then we'll interview. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I started writing it ten, uh, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so a big chunk of it, I was able to write like in three months. It was just pouring out of me. And so I had, up to that point, I knew it wasn't done, but it was still a solid manuscript. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to my dad, my mom, and my sister to read. And my sister um, and I, we love each other, but we're very different. And mm -hmm. uh, we just wanted to say, hey, if this ever gets published, I want you guys to know. And is there anything we need to talk about or whatever? And she's like, no. Mm -hmm. no. And, and they too. Well, my dad said, you're going to have to sell it. I didn't think it's, I think it's a lot of funny stuff. But mm -hmm. he said, um, you're going to have to sell it with a box of Kleenex. Uh, for tears of laughter and tears of sorrow. And I'm like, oh, that would be a fun, uh, you can double up with the Kleenex. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, no, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been good. My, it's been hard, but it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote my memoir a few years ago, and uh, it is hard work. Yeah. Well, I, the first chunk of it, um, I was like totally inspired one morning. I know it was the Holy Spirit, and it was like, why don't you just write down, you know, I mean, it was like going through my head, to write down all my my God stories, you know, and the amazing ways that God mm -hmm. has really helped us as our family and gotten me through mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, and just my struggles up and down. I was like, and to have something of my, the good God stories, too, to hand on to my children. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking all this, like, I should really do that. So I came out to my computer. I still had the business then. I had to look at correct uh, T-shirts and gifts then. And I came out to my office, which actually was this room. Now it's my mm -hmm. office. Um, and I got on the computer and I got an email from Patrick Madrid. And oh, he, yeah. said, he said, do you ever think of writing all your God stories down and your conversion story and everything in a full mm -hmm. book length? And I'm like, well, I just thought of it about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? If it's there, I'll write. Yeah. If it's not there, I can't. And yeah. it was like a whirlwind um, for yeah. three straight months. And mm -hmm. then it stopped. Mm -hmm. And then I put it away for 10 years. And then I felt called to hoping to finish it mm -hmm. and write some more things. And so I wrote, but I could never finish it. And so I put it away again. And about six months ago, that that poking from the, I think mm -hmm. it was from the Lord, I really do. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, it's time. It's time to take this out. And so mm -hmm. I started cleaning up all the older stuff that I had written because I had, in the meantime, I had gotten my master's degree um, online from Divine Mercy University. And man, did we have to write. We had a lot mm -hmm. of writing to do. And I really learned to write much better. Um, mm -hmm. So I was able to really clean it up and, you know, take some things out and, you know, um, mm -hmm. and about a month ago, you know, I'm cleaning it up and I'm like, I was able to finish it. Like yeah. I mean, the last yeah. chapter is I mean, mm -hmm. four pages mm -hmm. and I was like, this is perfect. This is mm -hmm. what it needed to be. It is about the blessed mother, mm -hmm. uh, called Jewish mothers, my mom, Jewish mother, mm -hmm. me, even though I'm Catholic, mm -hmm. Jewish mother. And then, mm -hmm. The, the most wonderful mother of all, Jewish mother of all, is Mary. So we started with my Jewish mother. And we ended up with, ended it with my mm -hmm. other Jewish mother. Mm -hmm. so it was time. Yeah. Well, you know, memoir takes, I think, longer than anything else. Um, when, when I started writing my book, um, what had happened is my mother had... Um, tried to chemically abort me in 1949 and she told me when I was 11 
And um, she did some damage to me uh, physically because I, I had to have facial reconstruction, two oh. surgeries, and then all the joints on the left side of my body are just a little bit smaller than those on the right. And so I have kind of a funny gait. <laughs> you know, I, I think people get used to it and it's like, oh, she's limping again. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, so I finally, I, I finally wrote the story because, um, you know, I'm obviously pro-life and I think that, um, I think that women in general, uh, even if the man in their life wants them to have an abortion, I think that the women should, um, be aware of what it is they're doing. I mean, it's not just, it's not solving a problem. It's making another one. Yeah. Plus you've killed somebody yeah. and the whole line of descent after that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why I wrote it. So I understand when you say, you know, that you, it takes time. It not only took time, I had a list of like three pages, single spaced, where I just put different incidents I wanted to talk about. So, you know, it's, I think it's a very difficult genre to write in. Well, it was a pleasure, the first part of it. And then I, it was guilt that was getting me to try to finish and try to finish because I mm -hmm. felt like God gave me my life my, and I, the blessings that I mean, so many. And then, mm -hmm. so I wanted to finish it and it wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. So, but the first part was definitely enjoyable. Well, all mm -hmm. of it was. It just had to be the right time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and my friend, I told her today, I sent her a link to the book. And she goes, wow, that happened so fast. I said, except for the 20-year part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but, you know, it helps because I think also as you think about what's happened in your life, and then you think about it, you know, another year down the road, it's like you get insights that you don't necessarily have right away. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. My spiritual director was thrilled. And she's like, and she's like, this is so cathartic that it, you know, mm -hmm. and just to look, you know, 20 years ago when I was writing some stuff, I, you know, I wasn't, I'm hoping I'm more mature now, but, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure I am. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really been healing and um, mm -hmm. it'll be something my grandkids can, hear all mm -hmm. the stories and and a mm -hmm. lot of it is the spiritual journey of the difficulty of letting go of my own will uh, mm -hmm. and and dealing with pain all the time um, yeah so i think it'll be really encouraging for the grandkids eventually especially well i have my son my youngest son has the same illness and then my oh. granddaughters and um so i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that she'll be able to see some of the, the more positives, mm -hmm. you know, how it's a closer walk with the Lord through this, because mm -hmm. you can't count on yourself, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and if anything, I hope to be able to pass on the not wasting grace, you know, offering it up, uniting it with, mm -hmm. with the Lord, because that's where it really, your life and your efforts and even your pain take, have wings, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. Only, I mean, my son, Christopher, you met Chris, who just finished mm -hmm. his book, and um, he would call when he was in seminary over in Rome, and he would call, and he's like, are you having a really awful day? And I was like, yes. And he's mm -hmm. like, I I just want to tell you, I'm feeling the graces. God's mm -hmm. blessing me. And I'm like, okay. And mm -hmm. that really helped to, um, even to, Further, you know, he was so far away, and now I have another son in Texas. This is far away, but it's like we're really so much closer when we pray for each other. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's been really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and is the pain debilitating, or are you able to do things? Or um, sometimes it's. I always say I'm either down for the count, or I'm back in the land of the living. Um, okay. If I've got a good sense of humor. Oh, you have to. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What else would you do, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it'll either, what is it? It'll either make you bitter or better. So I'm um, yeah. going to yeah. be better, hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so between, you know, the doctors will always say, what's your pain scale? You know, and it, it's, mm -hmm. so anything from like a seven 
down to one. I am like trying to do stuff. My my defense mechanism or my coping skill, I guess I could call it, um, mm -hmm. is uh, denial and diversion. I I'm mm -hmm. a distraction. So I'm in my art room a lot, or I'll have friends over, or um, listening to really good you know podcasts or whatever. Um, anything to get your mind off the page or prayer of course um but mm -hmm. prayer it really it actually intensifies the pain sometimes that you're really experienced in it you know mm -hmm. um but then when i'm at an eight i always told my husband i said if i'm laying down which i call getting horizontal if i need to get horizontal that's an eight and i just have to i just have to be down for the count there's, mm -hmm. there's no way of functioning and they can see it in my face sometimes and I'm pushing along. Um, and my husband goes, like, we're getting you home. And I'm like, thank you. You know, you try to keep going, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just, yeah. I can do things, but I pay for everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, two weeks ago, I went to three funerals in eight oh. days. A dear, dear friend. And so... When I went to my physical therapist after, I was a mess. And he goes, what happened to you? Did you fall? Did you hit the wall? What happened? I said, I acted normal. He goes, you can't do that. Um, because things mm -hmm. are all dislocated or... Um, mm -hmm. So, but you have to pick your fight, too. I mean, yeah. um, especially with the grandkids and my family, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I... I know it's, you know, Christmas was hard um, and cold weather is horrible for me, but mm -hmm. it was worth it to have all four of my kids together and the four grands here. And um, mm -hmm. so even with that, it puts things in perspective, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then the, when I'm laying, you know, when I have to get horizontal, it's just me and the Lord. <laughs> yeah. It really, really is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm under the covers. Um and I'm praying with my mm -hmm. body. I call it praying with my body. And, mm -hmm. um, and I'm giving it to God. And I'm praying for people. I, I, this might seem silly, but I've gotten into the habit of like assigning different body parts <laughs> to different um, problems. Like when I have a really bad migraine, my head is like ready to explode. I pray mm -hmm. for the head of our church. I pray for the Pope. You know, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that's who I should be praying for right now. Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, other pains like down in my, my, I have what I call a full body migraine that just everything um, spasms and dislocates. So there's a lot of nerve pain and stuff. And it'll run all the way from my head, all the way down to my behind, mm -hmm. down in my leg. So I call it the full body migraine. And I, I pray for those that are a pain in my behind, <laughs> you know, for the people that, you know, um, it's my way of loving them. And it's also a way of, you know, just trying to give it to God and he can do everything. He can, mm -hmm. you know, we can't do anything with our suffering, but if you join it with his, mm -hmm. he can do everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes my friends will just text me and they're like, so and so needs prayers, and I'll be like, "You got it." You know, I just give my whole day to that intention. Mm -hmm. um, my one girlfriend knows that rain, rainy weather is really bad for me, and cold weather is just mm -hmm. awful. This has just been, yeah, I don't like winter. And yeah, she's always texting me, "Pray for this one, pray for that," and I'm like, "Thank you for not letting me let any of this go to waste." You know, and mm -hmm. it brings me closer to the Lord. It brings me closer to His Mother. Um, you know, there's, you, God allows in our sufferings for us to be with him on the cross. Mm -hmm. But when he, he wasn't on the cross just to experience pain, it was because he, the pain mm -hmm. came from loving us, from taking mm -hmm. our sins. Now, I can't take anybody's sins away, but he, you know, and I can't give graces myself, but he can. So if I, he allows us to enter into that loving, relationship with him mm -hmm. and then with others so yeah it's been a in a crazy way i mean i i don't like the pain i mean it's of course really not. hard it's really hard but 
it's what it is and it's not wasted. And I've gotten, I mean, I am so grateful for my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, even when it goes up and down, you'll read in the book that, you know, it, it's not easy. I mean, I'm like, what the heck, you know? And, um, mm -hmm. but he just is drawing all of us closer to himself. Um, mm -hmm. in the, and it's not just in the difficult times, but we're supposed to offer up our joys also. I was just talking to somebody and they, I, I work with some ladies for spiritual advising and, um, she was like, why not? suffering enough i don't have anything to offer up i'm like no that's not the way to look at it you have joys and you have everything so to me what i i think is offering enough offering it up in one way is is a prayer prayer is lifting our hearts and minds to god right mm -hmm. so that's going to be our hearts minds and bodies right mm -hmm. he created us mind soul and body mm -hmm. so we lift all of that to God, what a beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. um, so I said to her, you know, this is great. If, if God wants, you will have it. I mean, nobody gets out of this world without some suffering mm -hmm. in life. Um, and not, you know, don't ask for it. It'll, you know, but, but unite everything to him. So I, I wrote this prayer. Oh, I didn't write it, but I, I put it in the book because I pray it every day after I receive communion and um, my husband's a deacon. So he, um, and we have a chapel in our house. So and have all different ministries we do here. Cause I don't really get out of the house because my issues. Um, but every day when I receive communion, I pray the um, it's called the servants of the Eucharist prayer. Mm -hmm. And I first heard it from sister Agnes back in the, 80s from a mm -hmm. of Japan, mm -hmm. and so it's such a beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. that it's uniting yourself to to the well. Can I pray it for you? Can I? Sure. It? It's yeah. Absolutely beautiful. It's um, mm -hmm. the Sacred Heart of Jesus, truly present in the Most Holy Sacrament of the Altar. I consecrate my body and soul to be entirely one with Your Most Sacred Heart, offered in perpetual sacrifice on all the altars of the world, giving praise to the Father and employing constantly for the coming of his kingdom. Please accept and receive this humble offering of myself and use me according to your will for the glory of the Father and the salvation of souls. That's- That's beautiful. Isn't that, the, and when I read it years and years ago, this little thing in the back of my head was like, that's your prayer. I didn't mm -hmm. do it. And um, and then probably about maybe 15 years ago, my husband and I um, were were talking and I had like this like light bulb moment. And it's like, not only do you pray those words, but God can transform you into mm -hmm. the words that you pray. Right. So, I mean, sometimes I'll just pick out a section of that prayer. And, and a lot of times it's usually according to your will. For the glory mm -hmm. of the Father and the salvation of souls. If that's all I could remember when I'm down for the count and I just pray that over and over. Um, it's my life is not a waste. Um, God has beautiful things He wants to do with each and every one of us, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what the other thing is too, is to give hope to people and why we the it's pain of grace. Um, mm -hmm. but living and suffering with dignity because yeah. our world are, has so ruined the definition of what dignity is and it's yeah. all the worldly definition is based on our productivity yeah. that's where we're seeing our worth but that's not where our dignity comes from it no. comes from, you know, it comes from being created in his image Mm -hmm. that's what our dignity is so even the person who's in a coma and or even old like my dad had alzheimer's and and he you know he was very sweet he didn't remember us but he still was he had his dignity he was still mm -hmm. my dad he was just dad in a different you know a different stage of his life but his right. was probably even more um he might have been doing working off his purgatory or but 
if we can look at what dignity really is, looking at ourselves that we're created in his image, he calls us in existence through his love. Our whole existence takes on a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. you know? And it brings us closer to each other because everybody suffers. I, yeah. I was talking to somebody today and I was like, you know, we have to give, you know, I don't know where in the Bible it is. Like just my husband is here. He knows the exact place, but it said we are to comfort others with the same comfort that God has given us. Mm -hmm. So it, And so it's taking us again. It's this um, where we're at, what we want to unite with Christ, which the whole idea is our entire being. And then to offer it for other people and for ourselves because we're relational. We we are called to relationship with other people, you know? Mm -hmm. So, oh, thank you. Like Second Corinthians 1-4. Thank you. <laughs> um, I like that. Our little, um, I, I need that. Can we, could we have that little pop-up? There's a little pop-up there. I'm like, I need that through life. You know, somewhere it oh, says. So know, why? <laughs> Uh, but my husband, he's so good with that. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never been good with that. But, but I, I know, you know, I try to get across what it says, you know. Um, but it's life is hard. Everybody is struggling, and nobody's a mistake. Nobody's a waste, mm -hmm. and nobody's less because they can, uh, they can do less. Mm -hmm. um, and I was talking to a young woman and she was saying that the college scene is, it's all on your productivity. I mean, it was bad enough when we were in college, you know, but this is a whole different, you know, you're only, you have to be doing this, this, and this, and you're wasting time if you're not doing that. And it's just, we need to turn our gaze toward God and slow down from the productivity, not not to be lazy, we don't want that, but to take that time just to be. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what it is to just be with the mm -hmm. Lord. And mm -hmm. that's when he speaks to us. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I feel like I'm talking to that, but you know, that it's just, that's when he speaks to us is in the silence of our heart. Yeah. Well, I don't know out there where you can get silent. I mean, sure. there's music everywhere, even in the elevators. I mean, I know it was in stores, but now it's even in the elevators. And it's like, mm -hmm. how, how are we going to develop a relationship with the Lord and each other if our mind is being bombarded with noise? Mm -hmm. And growing up, that we always had the TV on. So I had to make conscious decisions of what I was going to do and not do what worked, mm -hmm. what I thought worked and what didn't work for me when I was growing up. And so we didn't have the TV on constantly. And now we don't even, we're not even connected up to, um, I mean, we have YouTube, but we're not, we mm -hmm. don't have any of the normal TV set, you know, TV shows. And it's like, and I listen to, um, I watch art videos and mm -hmm. I listen to really good, um, you know, the different podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, but again, even with that, you can't, you need the quiet time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem. I mean, I, I do watch television, not an awful lot, but, um, you know, I like to be aware of what's, um, you know, what's going on or what new shows there are that are good. You know, I mean, there are some good shows, but it's a matter of control. Because the problem is that if you start enjoying television or movies or music or whatever it is, if you have it 24 hours, you know, so even in the car, you know, when I'm driving, I will turn the radio on because I want to make sure that the noise will keep me awake. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> it's important, yes. But um, at some point, you, you know, it's like it's just too much. So that's what it is. It's that we don't we don't have control. We seemingly do not have the control to ignore the temptation to just hear the music you like or just see the TV shows you like constantly. You know, so 
that's what's so wonderful about I love Lent. I really do. Um, last year for Lent, I was so out of control with sweets before that. I just, I my will was not trained very well. And I was like, you know what? I need to get back in control. And I can mm -hmm. only do it if Jesus helps me. So that was helpful. And I was able to, you know, not, I mean, I, I love sweets. Um, and so I was able to be more moderate, you know, yeah, and, yeah. But everything like, in balance. Right. And even with yeah. like the, it's okay to enjoy music and a show. And, but again, it's like, it has to be, it, you have to have your priorities straight. And oh, that's my puppy. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to sit with me right now. So this is Sam. Oh, nice. He's my, I'm his comfort person. Oh, okay. That, he's supposed to be like more of a comfort person or dog for me, but I think it's mm -hmm. turned around the other the way. The other way. Yeah. Well, that's how okay. it is with the cat. The cat's never more than two feet behind me. Yep. <laughs> it's nice. It's good. Um, but yeah, we just have to, to slow down. I'll, I'll sometimes with the, the young women that I'm talking with that I'll say, Go outside and look at the tree and just look at all the different colors in the leaves. You look at the mm -hmm. tree and it's green. Mm -hmm. Like go out, spend five minutes and just look at the tree and you see all the different shades of the green. And then mm -hmm. you can see the blue, the light blue of the sky behind it. And it's like, God made that for us so mm -hmm. we can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can... Um, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's where he speaks to us through through the beauty that he's created. Mm -hmm. He only can speak to us in the silence of our heart. And I mm -hmm. think that that's, we're really lacking in that um, mm -hmm. as a society, as a world. Yeah. So, so I, you know, one of the blessings is um, I don't do as much as I used to. And I, especially when I have headaches, and, mm -hmm. and the lights, you know, from, from yeah. my things, it's like, I am forced to be in silence and darkness. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. That's become actually beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, very, I guess you could say productive prayerfully or just mm -hmm. resting in him. Um, mm -hmm. But we don't hear that today. We don't, we don't hear that, that we need that. Um mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just, I'm hoping that people reading the book will realize that joy can be found in, in difficult things and easy things and, mm -hmm. and everywhere. You know, God is yeah. everywhere. He's in our pain. He's in our suffering. He suffered everything that we suffered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his mother, oh my goodness, she, Our Lady of Sorrows, she knows. So, mm -hmm. That's when we can cuddle up in the in the Lord's arms. You know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the statue of um, St. Francis and Jesus. Mm -hmm. So um, St. Francis is under the crucifix and he's reading. Yeah, Francis is I am. Up. In fact, yeah. I have one of those statues. Oh, yeah. My yeah. son has one. It's beautiful. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's when... He is holding us. Mm -hmm. That's when he's loving us. Mm -hmm. And just that we make ourselves present to him is us trying to love him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Um, and I mean, through the book, you'll see going up and down and learning mm -hmm. this. But um, and fear comes in. And again, this is one thing, you know, um, a young lady, um, I don't know if I should say who it is, but I heard on a podcast, um, uh, a wife of someone um, that I listened to his podcast, and she was being interviewed by her husband, and the whole time she's talking, I'm like, I think she has what I have. I think she has what I have. And about halfway through, she said she had Ellers Danlos. And my first thought was, oh, I remember being young. I re I remember when I was her. You know, she has mm -hmm. little children. Um, this is all new to her. 
this is hard. And she has a wonderful husband that supports her. But I was like, I know the rocky path mm -hmm. and, and how difficult it could be. And that was one thing that was just like a few months ago that I listened to this podcast with her. And I'll tell you, that lit a fire under me that I was like, I want to break this. I want to finish this book for mm -hmm. people like her, just mm -hmm. not alone. Yeah. And God is with her and she can do it through the grace of God. And even though it's super hard and you think you might not be able to, to give your children and your husband what you think they need and what you mm -hmm. always hoped for. Them struggling with her, those my family struggling with me made I think made my children I have incredible children and I'm so and mm -hmm. it's God's grace. Mm -hmm. um, I was very close to my grandma. I, I don't know if you had a chance to read that, but my grandma was a very special woman in my life. And when I was like 11, I was the one that took her to the hospital. I was in the ambulance with her um, for her last trip to the hospital. And she was always sick. She was, and my grandfather, he ended up leaving and because he, he couldn't deal with it. And he blamed her for not being, you know, if she had more faith, she'd be well. And it was a mess. And my grandma was the most loving witness to me. She sat in her chair, she had a bad heart. Um, and she would sit in her chair and I would sit right next to her. Like she wasn't bothered with all this other stuff, you know, so mm -hmm. I was able to enjoy her and I knew she loved me. And my grandma, I'm pretty sure set the pace and the tone of my heart of acceptance and also love how you can love through the pain, love with the pain. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's one. There was one part in the book when I was having a pity party, um, and I was just I was coming back from Hopkins, and another it was they couldn't, you know, it was like oh we know what you have, but there's nothing we can do for you, you know, and it was just, and I was very frustrated, and I was having a pity party in the back of the car, laying flat, and I started crying. And my husband's like, "What are you hurting? What's going on?" And I'm like, "No, I, I can't be a wife. I can't be." the mother to my children like I want to. I can't do this. I can't do that. And he said nothing. And I'm like, is he even listening to me? Or, or he's had it with me, you know? Because, well, then we pulled over, grabbed lunch, and he said grace, and he looked at me and goes, what did your grandmother ever do for you? And I just looked at him. I remember this to this day, and I'm like, oh, shut up. You're right, you know? <laughs> my grandma loves me. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember, you know, um, mm -hmm. and my grandkids like, oh, gosh, when they come over, they just they know sometimes, you know, we'll be in the art room and I they play with Mimi, you know, and that's and we have a wonderful time. And sometimes Mimi can't do what Mimi wants to do. And so we just snuggle, you know, mm -hmm. and, and but they don't care. It's just and so if you take that beautiful relationship with grandparents to the grandchildren it can be that way with ourselves to the lord you know or sometimes you just need your mother um my mom died unexpectedly about what well, was a year after my dad died she had fallen broken her neck and died oh awful it was awful my poor sister and her family it happened to their house. it was terrible i thought so but you know sometimes you just need your mom and so <laughs> different times where you know it's like oh i think about her or whatever and it's like but the blessed mother shows up you know mm -hmm. she can understand or i can pray for my mom's soul if it's not already in heaven if it's still in purgatory i can pray for her and know she's praying for me and we get along a lot better now than when she was alive and we mm -hmm. understand each other a lot better now you know mm -hmm. um so it's actually in a weird way, praying for the other person, resting with the Blessed Mother to be closer to your own mother, resting with Jesus, draws you to Him mm -hmm. and to others. It, yeah, again, it's just it's He made us for relationship with Him and for each other. Mm -hmm. 
I think, you know, part of the, the thing that comes to me, and I mean, I, you're right, um, the relationships we have with other people, even though they're different depending on what, you know, but it's, it's true. It's, um, to me, it's the spice of life. It's, it's just wonderful when you, you know, when you get a friend and, and it lasts for decades, you know, something like that. But I'm especially aware of that now because of the ending of a relationship, you know? So um, it goes to a different level, you know? I mean, before I could look at my husband and tell him I loved him. I can't do that anymore. Yes, and he could do the it. same, you but you can it. say it. Yes, you're right. And you'll hear it. I really yeah. can see the grace of God. I mean, I hope that's theologically correct, but you can say that to him and he's loving you back. You know, oh, I know, I know, but it's but you, yeah. there's a real difference because we are people who use our senses more than the intellect, you know, the spiritual sense of the intellect. So it's it's very difficult. Um, you know, and I mean, I think that's something that people feel, but they don't know how to express it because you know, you see people that are together for 30, 40 years, and it's like, oh, you know, I still love them, but what. They don't know how to how to do anything with that anymore because you know the person is not here. So it is. It's. It, I find that very difficult. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. So yeah. one of the blessings of I mean, I was I got sick when I was 33, and we didn't know if I had the one that could dice uh, your aorta with spontaneously dissect and I can oh good lord well they found out um it's the vascular type of allergy in those and um so even it took nine months for them to even diagnose what was going on with me and every day it was something worse mm -hmm. and worse and so i was forced to deal with my mortality at 33 mm -hmm. you know and that's not a bad thing because it took my mind and moved it to getting to know the saints better. You know, mm -hmm. so not only did I have the friends here in heaven, I started reading saint books and I started getting excited that if I did die young or whenever I die, I can't wait. I'll be leaving my friends down here to go mm -hmm. and actually be with the friends that I've made these years learning about them, mm -hmm. painting them, you know, writing mm -hmm. poems about them. And so mm -hmm. it really helped me direct my eyes to where I should. Um, I mean, I love life. I don't like the pain at all. And my son and I, we talk um, that it's like, you know, I know what it's like to, to want the pain to stop. And wanting, I mean, there's, there's times that we just want to be dead. And it's not, we wouldn't do, I mean, God obviously no, isn't ready you. for us. He's not ready for us. But and people have to decide, you know, why do I want to be dead? Is it the, or am I just so, some of you are just so sad that I don't want to be sad anymore. Well, that's the issue. You can get work on that here. You don't have to be dead to have that, you know. Uh, yeah. And and so with Eric and I, we're like, oh, it's going to be, so he laughs at this. We were talking about death. And I said something to my husband. Oh, I asked him, I said, so when we die, we don't take our bodies with us right away, right? He goes, no, death is the separation of the soul from the mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him like, oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> I was like, I mean, because I'm mm -hmm. not all crazy about this body. It's, it's just very painful. Mm -hmm. um, so... And I, and God is, I, mean, I am so blessed with good friends that pray for me. And God has given me such a strong faith. I mean, I pray mm -hmm. every day that he doesn't take my faith away because I know it's a gift. And I, mm -hmm. and that's why I want other, I want to share it with others. You know, mm -hmm. how he's healed my heart, how he, so that when he does call me home, and we talked about this when the kids were, you know, teenagers and even now. And, and Father Chris was saying, he's like, 
uh oh, now that like when I met the Pope, who John Paul II, and he's like, oh no, she might die now, you know, because she got to meet her hero, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, and then they were the kids are teasing, and it's like, um, no, she's got more praying to do. But like even like now, I finally got my you know, the book is out there and I mm -hmm. wanted it for my children and my grandchildren and for anybody that it would help them grow closer to God. And my first thought was, oh, I'm ready. I I love my children. I love my husband. I love my wife. My, but it's just one place to the other. And if you get to, and I love the Lord. So, and I trust them. But it, it's hard to get to that point, you know, and that's what the journey of life is, is to through the challenges of life, you're going through a, a hard challenge right now. But where's God in that? Where is he? And when we ask those questions and we're, our mind is then turned to him, mm -hmm. things get better in our soul yeah. and in our mind mentally. You know, we that's mm -hmm. where we find peace. I I was, I don't want to have a spoiler, but I was watching something on TV, a good show that everybody should watch, but just in case they haven't seen it, I don't want to tell what it was. So I will talk about it from the biblical point of view. Mm -hmm. Peter walking on the water. Mm -hmm. And I believe, just call to me, Lord, and I will walk outside of this boat and I'll come to you just, you know. And he starts and he's walking and he takes his eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what happens? Things he failing, he starts sinking. Mm -hmm. and Jesus, he said, Look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. And I love that image because, and through my issues of my health and different things, it's like I always hear you look at me, look mm -hmm. at me, and and then it's okay. Mm -hmm. He's got it. I surely don't have it, you know, but he's got it, and he, mm -hmm. I can trust him because he's trustworthy. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, sometimes I give people homework and I say the women I work with and I'm like, OK, this week or this next couple of weeks, you write down ways that God has shown you personally that you could trust them. And they love that. They're little ways. Mm -hmm. But once you get that, it's easier when you can trust someone. Mm -hmm. it's with relationships, you and your husband, me and my husband, when we were dating, you know, can I trust this person? Can I? So it, it, we ease into it. So mm -hmm. when you ease into like trusting the Lord, who is the most trustworthy of all, mm -hmm. then our eyes are fixed on him. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the quote that I love from the Bible is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, it's not me. And Paul talks about this too. That it's not me who is doing things. It's Christ who dwells in me. Like all scripture comes alive mm -hmm. when your eyes are fixed on the Lord. And mm -hmm. sometimes he needs, most times, at least for me and I'm a hard head, he needs to strip us of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you said it the best at the beginning. Or we're going all the way back to the beginning then. That. Um, Sebastian had to decrease and you must increase. When Jesus, when, um, yeah, this has to increase and St. John the Baptist has to decrease. Mm -hmm. And that's when things take off and mm -hmm. it's God's will. And God does that to us where yeah. we must, I had to decrease so he could increase. And you'll read in the book that that was a hard lesson for me. I mm -hmm. wanted a healing. I was when I, I mean, I was really scared and I was like, God, I am so ready for healing. I'm, I'm open to anything blocking this. If there, if there is, please don't, you know, don't let that get in the way and just zap me and heal me. And I mean, I was praying and I heard the weaker you are, the more I can work through you. I was mad. I was so upset because I finally got to the point where I just laid it on the line. And this was his answer. And so I came home from church and my husband's like, what's going on? I'm like, well, this, I was finally, you know, reaching out. And this is the, you know, I think this is what I heard and got the Bible. And he said, well, it's biblically sound. Mm -hmm. The fact that you don't like it 
is probably from God and not from you. Um, so it, but it took me a long time to realize this is so weird, but it, when we decrease and God increases in us, that's when we become who we were meant to be, who were, mm-hmm. we were created to be. Mm-hmm. And it lifts us. It, yeah, I want that for everybody. <laughs> I want mm-hmm. that's the potential. That's our magnanimity, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to put aside the ranger so we can be. Yeah, I'm thinking of Aragorn, you know, so we can, yeah. be, you know, the king that we're supposed to, or the queen, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, so that's what my story is about: is the journey, the difficult times, but God is so good and so loving, and I can guarantee a hundred percent that if people in difficult situations, whether they're loss or health issues, or I mean, there's so many different things that if they turn their eyes to the Lord and he's on the crucifix and they see that he even gave up everything for us, Mm -hmm. we can give up ourselves in a sense Mm -hmm. for him, Mm -hmm. him and his, I mean, he's just amazing. He will make us who we were created to be and more than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's what the book is about. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I agree. It's you know I haven't heard you say anything that I disagreed with. It's um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, but still, as you said, it's hard to go through. It it's hard to go through. And if I can go through it, anybody can. And it, that's the other thing with like the early part of the book talks about my conversion. Mm-hmm. Like I tell some friends of mine that have problems with their um, teenage kid. And I'm like, if God can convert me, mm-hmm. and I was completely worldly. And there's a lot of, like, it's a good story, my conversion. Mm-hmm. If God can bring me to himself, there is hope for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. So mm-hmm. it is. It's to give people hope. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yours is your your memoir is to give people hope. Mine is to hopefully save lives. It's like it's the same thing, really. It's and mine too is the emphasis people, is different. Yeah, I mean, but mine's on the other end is the assisted mm-hmm. suicide. That people are like, well, I can't do anything. Just pull the plug. And and I know people are suffering, and I know pain is excruciating. Trust me, I have. If they can take stuff for the pain, I mean, I have medication that'll help me, and I have different I, things that I have to do. Um, definitely don't, you know, don't be a martyr by any means. Mm-hmm. But if you can control the pain, or if you can, you know, that has to be, we have to take care of our people, you know, palliative care. Mm-hmm. But be with them, love them at the end, let them know that their lives are worthwhile. Even them just laying in the bed, they're making us saints, you know? Um, my husband used to say, well, he still does, that me being sick made him a be- better father, made mm-hmm. him a better husband. So mm-hmm. there are blessings you don't expect. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, yeah, this, ugh, so sad, this world. But God is bigger. I always, when the kids were young, we watched the Veggie Tales. And there was a song, God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman. And I love it. I love it. Song. And I still sing it. That's, a, that's a great title. Isn't it wonderful? It's Veggie Tales. I'm not sure which one it is, but it might be the first one uh, that they put out. And I mean, when I get discouraged with the world and the news and different things, even in our church and different, and I can feel the heaviness and I start singing that silly song that God is bigger than the boogeyman and he is so I'm going to have to get that song and memorize it <laughs> oh it's so good it is just it's really really good yeah look it up on YouTube God is I bigger will. than the boogeyman mm. so, yeah. so. well my mm. jaw is now starting to go out I've been having a lot of um, dislocations with my jaw so I think I've talked probably long okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
if that's okay. <laughs> okay, it is. So, uh, shall we close in a prayer? Absolutely. Would you like to lead us? or? I, w- I would love to. Thank okay. you. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with Cynthia and me today. We ask you to use our our conversation, that it will give glory to you, and help people know how much you love them, and that with you, they can handle not just handle, but grow closer to you and to each other. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much. This is a very interesting interview. And I have to say that the background there, I can't imagine the kind of art you do, but it's going to be great. It's so oh, it's organized. So fun. I don't know if I can... I think I, this is something, I mean, this is just fun. It's like a mixed media piece. Yep. I don't know if you can see. Mm-hmm. It's, can you see oh, that? beautiful. So that's something I did. And um, I do a lot of journaling. And that keeps mm-hmm. me, so that's the other thing. I mm-hmm. need my art. We need mm-hmm. something. Art is therapy for me. That's what I used to do when I was mm-hmm. a teacher. Um, and I see It's just me and God in my art room, and we're just Mm -hmm. playing and creating, and it's so mentally good for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, if you're ever in town town and want to come and play, that's what Mm -hmm. I do in the art room. Yeah, Yeah, I'm not uh, into, I have no artistic ability, but I do um, craft, you know, I have, um, I make crazy quilts. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and I uh, I like to quilt, and I also crochet. I, if I don't crochet every day, I, I saw a shirt. It's like, I crochet because murder is wrong. <laughs> I love that. My <laughs> grandma, the grandma that I was telling you about, she taught me to crochet, and we would crochet, and I just, I've been crocheting puppy sweaters. So, oh. Yeah, you've got to do something. Mm-hmm. That gives you joy. And it does, it yeah, it does give me joy. Sometimes Both the quilting and the crocheting. Distraction, I mean, you can't just distract, but sometimes distraction can be a good thing. No, a yeah, I agree. Yeah. Everything has its place and its time. Yeah, yeah so. Oh, well, anyway. God bless you. Thank you for talking with me and letting me run. Oh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed you, it. Cynthia. I will pray for you Thank and you. your husband. Yeah, so. and for the repose of my husband's soul. I absolutely will. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.